Hi and welcome to today's video log in uh, the project PhonoCollab at Ausnit E. I've decided to make this video log uh, about reflection in sound and what is reflection in sound. Normally you would think about reflection as something that you do through words so I would like to talk about how can we actually use sound as a means of reflection. You can just see behind me there is a reflection, right? Now, uh, so this is another way to think about the word reflection, right? That is something that is reflecting what is around us. So if we use words, we are going to reflect what's around us through different categories that we have decided to, to, to define according to different um, binary relationships, right? But with sound you can actually make a reflection uh, about what's going on about what you are perceiving around you um, in a more gradient way, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, what about music? Is music a means of reflection in sound? And uh, that's an interesting question. So what is music? I mean, that's a very big question. So I'm going to give a very, very simple answer to that right now. Music is what we define as being music. Let's go a little back in time. In, back in time to my childhood. The first thing I was uh, I met when I was starting at my uh, recorder class in the first grade was this sign, um, and I had to write it many times and repeat it. So the the, the way that I have been presented with music throughout my uh, time as a, a, a young person has always been through um, music being defined as something which consists of chords and scales and measures and these kinds of things. So when we talk about music through the terms of chords and scales and measures and these things, we are, we're presuming that music is something that is already there, that it's already existing out there. This way of describing music as if it is a material that we can work with is actually basically uh, a problem because we are ignoring that music exists in time. Music is simply a temporal phenomenon. So even if we describe the temporal aspects of music, we're doing it through categories such as measures, rhythms, and uh, duration of notes, and we're happy, right? We can describe music through these categories and we're happy because we don't have to relate to the most important thing, that music is time and that music is something made by people and for people. So I would like to call this, uh, this way of viewing uh, music as the quantization regime, like, you know, the, the, the way to see music as something you can uh, describe through a mathematical uh, relationship. Another aspect of this um, way that we usually talk about music when we talk about music is that we consider it as something which is uh, based on indiv individuals. We think of music as something that uh, an individual person is uh, creating, creating a masterpiece that is going to be consumed by a mass of an anom anonymous individual persons. So I would state that this individualistic and materialistic view of music has marked, has defined uh, our musical education and still is. So let's get back to now. So what's happening now with all the technology that we have and all the apps that are coming? What is going to happen with our musical education when everything is appified? Let's take this example. This is garage band and these are instruments in the orchestra. These are strings, right? Okay, this is another part of, of GarageBand and um, let's see what this is. This is a drum kit, right? So I'm gonna take this one, put it here. And I'm gonna take that one. And clapping hands. So what I did was just, I did actually just whatever. And it sounds really cool. So, what we're looking at is an app where you can do two or three things and it already sounds like if you were a professional. 
Same thing happens when you sing in this app. You can sing and it, it helps you sing correctly so you don't sing out of tune. How do I stop this? Let's see this. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having an app that can help you do two or three movements and then it makes music that sounds as what we already define as music. That's not the problem. But it is also an example of what happens when you take this way of thinking about music, which is a materialistic, uh, a binary, and an individualistic approach, and you condense it and put it inside an app. Let's, let's see what happens in this app. You are alone while, while playing it, right? The app ignores time, right? Because if you, if you mess around with time, you don't put the, the beats on the right place, it will help you put the beats on the mathematical right place. The same goes with tone. So if you have any kind of individuality and you use this app, it will be washed away. And what you get is mainstream music, the mainstream understanding of what music is. The basic problem is code. Code is everywhere, all around us. Everything is controlled by code. Our digital lives are controlled by code. So, what is the problem? The problem is that a specific way of using algorithms is going to control much more than you are aware of in your digital life and that is to say the same as your real life because everything is mixed up now, right? So what I'm saying is we have to take control over code. So my question is, is music the right place that we can go if we want to reflect through sound? And of course for some it is possible, right? We have uh, outsourced the capacity of using music as a means of reflection to a group of specialists. We call them musicians and composers. The current way that we understand and use music is not the place, from my, from my perspective, where we can reflect through sound. So what can we do? Let's think about speech. What happens when we're using spoken words? I think it's interesting to see uh, language, spoken language, as a place where we can actually store, uh, you could call it soft information, about what's going on around us. Now language, spoken language, is actually a place where, you can, where we can store information and we can inherit it, we can pass it on to future gen generations. What's interesting about language is that you can't say who, who made it up. You can't find the author of it. We are all in it. Right? Language is a collective uh, tool. So I suggest we use language as a point of departure when thinking about how can we reflect through sound. Music is only a matter for a small elite of musicians and composers. You can say that language is for everyone. Everyone has it. Everyone uses language to express themselves through sound. And they do it with a lot of nuances. Apart from communicating uh, information through the words that we're using, the rest of the spoken language is all music. It's rhythms, it's melody, it's pauses. Actually, it's all the things that make music musical. At the same time, it is also the same things that we are not doing when we're making these apps like GarageBand. All these things that make language musical and that is a reflection of our emotional states, of our relations to each other, of our collectivities. All these things have been pulled out of music when we're building these apps. And at the same time, these things are also what, make, what makes music an art which exists in time, which is existing of time. And therefore, this art form is a tool for us 
to reflect about time and in time and it's probably the best form. So um, I have developed this tool called Phonocollab. The name Phonocollab is of course the combination of the word phono which means sound and collab which is a short for collaboration. Phono also means voice and uh, this app, this tool is built on this idea that we can use our voices when using sound as a means of reflection and we can do it together. The app is designed in a way where you have to use your voice. You have to use sound which is existing around you and you have to collaborate. So there is a first level where you record a sound in the room. You can think of it as establishing a body in sound. The second layer is where you use your voice and you express something. And of course you can express many things. The thing about this app is that it's designed in a way where you can use your voice to control the sound. And people are so brilliant at using their own vo voice to express their emotions. So this is basically what the app is about. You express your emotions, your feelings, and you give character to this body of sound. And there is a third level to uh, this app, which is movement, right? So uh, in order to give this body of sound plus a emotional forming of it, some life, you have to move. This is why I designed the app in a way where you can use a smartphone in order to control the sound. So you move around in space while uh, moving a dot on the smartphone and only when there is movement there will be sound. So if you stand still the sound stops. The app is also made in a way where you have to collaborate because one person can only control one sound. And in order to have things happening you need to have more players. The volume will go up for each player. So the, the, the app is designed in a way where you need to be more people in order to make uh, something that makes sense. I think that this tool is um, a good tool uh, if you want to use sound as a means of expression and reflection. It takes into account that you are uh, in a local place, right? Because we're using the sounds from the local place. It also takes into account your emotional states and your relation to other people. Because you're using your voice to control the sound, it's a much more intuitive way than if you were to think about using your hands on a uh, touch screen. Because when you use your voice, you're so familiar with doing it that you don't think. And if you start thinking, you start making choices. And if you make choices, you, are, you have a tendency to reproduce the same ways of seeing things that you hear about in music education. That you are supposed to, to, to fit in with a, a scheme, right? You need to, to hit the right point at the right time. You need, need to, to sing the right note at the right time, at the right tune. And with Phonocollab you don't, you don't have to think about these things. Actually, if you try to think about these things, if you want to make something that sounds as what we define as music, you don't succeed in doing it. And the third aspect, collaboration. Since we are obliged to work as a collective using this tool, it can become a place where we can actually reflect on what's going on in the collective that we are part of. It's going to, it can, it can mirror what is happening in the relationship between uh, all the uh, people that are in this collective. I would go as far as to say that you can't use sound as a means of, of reflection if you're not embedding this activity in a, a local place, in a collective, 
and if you're not doing it in a way where you are actually able to uh, intuitively express uh, your own feeling states uh, through sound. So that was today's lark. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I hope you will uh, comment and participate and share.